People have been asking me for an update on some of the boots that I've been wearing. So today I wanted to give you a two month update on these trench boots from Oak Street Bootmaker, about one year on these Grant Stone diesel boots, and then about two years on a natural shell cordovan pair from Viberg. And I'll also be giving you my thoughts and impressions based on my time with each of these pairs. So we're gonna start off first here with some natural Chrome XL diesel boots from Grant Stone. And I picked these up after Wyatt, the owner for Grant Stone, came by our shop and we did an interview just before the pandemic started in early 2020. So I've had these since about spring of 2020 and I just absolutely love these boots. Out of the box, these are probably the most comfortable boots I've ever put on just straight out of the box. I think that says a lot to the sizing and the sizing guidance that I received from the team over at Grant Stone. So I guess the biggest advice I can give for any pair of footwear is to get sized correctly. And the guys at Grant Stone will do a great job helping you out with that. Let's talk about how the leather is wearing in. You can see we've got quite a bit of dents, scuffs and scratches. This is all sort of normal for what you should expect to see the way that Chrome Excel wears in. It will easily accumulate all these little dense scuffs and scratches. And here's a look at the uh, left boot here. You can see more dense scuffs and scratches on the toe and on the heel, sort of all over the place. And this is what you can expect to see from Chrome Excel just in general. It's not a very durable leather in terms of the finish. So you can dent, scuff, and scratch the natural finish that's applied to this. I've sort of noticed that there's a zero-sum balance between the abrasion resistance and how natural the appearance of the leather is. So if you really heavily finish leather with heavy paints and pigments, you can even apply some scratch-resistant finishes. It kind of changes the appearance and it makes it look a little bit less natural. It kind of looks a little bit more fake to me, almost like a if you can visualize patent leather. Kind of looks like that a little bit. And by applying all that finish, you really lose the natural character of the leather. So I tend to prefer a natural look. And personally, I kind of like how this leather looks as it's become a little bit more beaten up. I wear these as work boots, so I'm not trying to impress a fancy client or anything like that. These are very much a functional pair for me, but I also think they're pretty stylish. A couple more things to note on the Grant Stone. Take a look at how the break is happening on the leather here where my toe flexes. This is a really, really good break, especially for Chrome Excel. Some pieces of Chrome Excel, depending on where the manufacturer cuts the patterns from, they can be a little bit more coarse and pipey. We call it a loose break. This one has a very tight break and it's really nice. I've noticed this in a lot of Grant Stone's boots and shoes. So they do a really nice job cutting the leather. So some shoe manufacturers might not be able to have this level of attention to detail. I've, I think I've seen maybe one pair now on the Grant Stone Facebook group where they had a little bit of looseness, but I've seen hundreds of pairs from Grant Stone that have just about perfect looking leather. You can see a little bit here. This is, this is what the looseness starts to look like. For me up here, it's acceptable and appropriate. If I see this sort of loose look where the toe is flexing, that's a much worse look. Another couple details about the diesel boots that I really like. I like the choice of these thicker eyelets and the wider spacing of the eyelets because I find it uh, to be just a good look, but it's also really easy to lace up together. There's some Alden boots that I have where these speed hooks are closer together and it's kind of a pain to get the laces inside of them. So I really like the choice of hardware for these Grant Stones. A couple other things that I like about these diesel boots. I like the midsoles that they're using and I, I don't know much detail about what they are using here, but I think this midsole being a little bit thinner than something like the Vibergs that we're going to look at, I think that makes it a little bit more comfortable because it's more able to flex in a pleasant way. I like also this sort of day night style stud sole. I have noticed though that when I wear these for a long period of time, that harder rubber sole is a little bit tiresome, I guess you could say. It, it feels like it fatigues me a little bit more than the leather soles. The stud sole also has a decent amount of grip. I wouldn't say that you're gonna climb a piece of ice with them, but it's a good amount of grip. A uh, better amount of grip than on the leather sole. And you can also see the day-night sole barely anywhere at all here. And I should say it's a day-night style sole. This is a proprietary sole that Grant Stone is having made uh, themselves. But very little wear at all 
on these. And I wore these pretty hard for many months. So if I had to give any amounts of criticism, it's kind of hard for this boot. I really, really enjoy this one. But I've noticed out of the box, super, super comfortable, probably the most comfortable out of the box. I've noticed it's become perhaps a little bit too roomy now that I've worn it and the Chrome Excel has sort of broken in around my foot. I feel like I have like a little bit too much room in the front of the toe box and the sides of the toe box, but I think that's probably the appropriate fit. I think perhaps that my style, I like to feel a little bit more held in. The other thing I noticed too, when I visited Grant Stone, they helped me size myself. I have a pretty high instep. So I tend to get a little bit pinchy here if I size down a slight bit. So I think I do have the correct size for myself. This is a triple wide. I tried a single wide and the width was better, but I was getting a little bit too much of the shoe touching on the top of my foot right about here. And the next shoe I wanna look at here, this is my most recent pair of footwear. And this is what I'm wearing for the Stitch Down Patina Thunderdome. <laughs> this is a trench boot from Oak Street Bootmakers, also in natural Chrome XL. I've been wearing this boot every day for the last two months, and that's again part of this Patina Thunderdome. But the idea is to see how different leather and different footwear wears in and develops patina over about seven months of time. So these trench boots I've absolutely enjoyed. I've been wearing them every day, like I said. I've been wearing them really hard. I haven't polished these at all, and I think they look great. A couple things to note from the Oak Street Trench Boots. You might notice we were talking about brake on those diesel boots, and this type of brake here is a little bit more pebbly, but I would say this is still in the acceptable range. We are talking about how much I appreciated the cutting that Grandstone has. You can see a good scar here. This is a good place to cut a scar into a, a boot pattern, something on this quarter panel is totally fine. If this was on the toe or on the vamp anywhere, I think that would be wildly inappropriate. And again, this is a work boot, so I don't get all ruffled up about something like this. I think that's totally acceptable, but I didn't notice anything like that on the Grant Stones that I have. And I have two pairs of natural Chrome Excel uh, footwear from Grant Stone. None of them have any scars cut into it, but I think these are very stylish. I haven't really worn any cap toe shoes, and this is a nice little perforation along that cap toe. I think that's a really nice look. The other thing that I'm enjoying perhaps the most about these is just how comfortable they are. Again, out of the box, super comfortable, and that's also because I was sized by the owner. They will size you directly. So contact Oak Street, Grandstone, Viberg, all these different shoemakers directly and get the right size for yourself. That was very valuable for me. But these are super comfortable out of the box. And I think they're even more comfortable because these are unlined. So we have no lining on the inside here. We just have the flesh side that's sort of hard to show right now on the inside of here touching my leg. So this is very, very comfortable, very flexible. And because it's Chrome Excel, we have the bit of veg tan character, it's molding around my body. So again, as I wear this, this one is becoming more and more comfortable, or I felt like the Grant Stone just maybe a little loosened up a little bit too much. And it also doesn't have the same amount of flexibility because there's a liner in those diesel boots where there's no liner here. A couple other surprising things that I love about the trench boot here, and this particular one is on a leather sole. They don't make all of the trench boots on a leather sole. This sole is incredibly comfortable. I really am enjoying a leather sole, and that was one of my goals for uh, the pair of boots that I was to buy next, which ended up being these. I really wanted a leather sole, and they're insanely comfortable. A lot of flexibility in the sole here. The drawback is they're super smooth. So I actually, uh, my car battery died, and I had to push my car, and I fell on my face because this is basically nothing. There's no tread or no grip at all on here. I think the next pair I'm going to try, I'm going to do a half sole or something like the commando sole from Alden, just to get a little bit of traction here and a little bit of traction on the heel with nothing in the center. I'm imagining by having the half sole with a little bit of leather in the center, give me the range of flexibility that I'm looking for in addition to some of the tread that I'd like. And here's a look at the left boot here. You can see a pretty good scuff on my toe. Again, I wear all my stuff while I'm working. I'm moving boxes, I'm moving machines. I'm on my feet most of the day working in these things. So I don't baby them at all. In fact, again, I like getting them sort of scuffed and scratched. Uh, this one looks a little bit intense there, but these are all by accident. I'm not trying to scuff this up at all. One more thing to note about these boots that really surprised me. 
I like this rawhide lace wrapped around the shaft a lot. And I wasn't expecting to enjoy that. This is something that George from Oak Street suggests for all of their footwear is to sort of wrap it around your ankle. And I actually like that a lot. I think it's a cool look. My trepidation with these boots originally was I just like speed laces. And I thought by having these eyelets in the top, it would take too long to lace. But I'm noticing by wrapping it around my ankle, it's actually pretty quick to lace up and it stays attached really well. I, I really dig it. Okay, the last pair to look at. These are a special pair of boots from Viberg. These are natural shell cordovan. So the same natural color with no stains applied, but on a different leather tannage. So the other two were Chrome XL. This is the Shell Cordovan, also from Horween Leather Company. This is the Derby boot from Viberg, and it's in a last that I wasn't aware of this until somebody pointed out. This is a last that they don't really offer. This is a 110 last, and this 110 last, I'm not really sure why they're not doing this anymore because I like it a lot. Maybe they'll bring it back. So I did put some new laces on these boots. So these are round waxed laces in a green color. It's like an olive green. And I think that works really well with the natural shell cordovan. In fact, if I recall correctly, I did a live stream where I had people vote on what laces to put on these. And that was the winner. I think it works great. Let's talk about how the leather is wearing in. We're sort of seeing the same effects that you see on the Chrome XL where it will accumulate dense scuffs and scratches. And this is an inherent characteristic of all veg tan leathers. They tend to dent up scuff and scratch. So Shell Cordovan is a full veg leather. And if you put your fingernail on it, you, you're gonna get a dent. If you scratch it, you're gonna get a scratch. That stuff sort of happens. But the interesting thing about the Shell Cordovan is those scuffs and scratches tend to be filled in pretty easily with just a little bit of polish. I've actually had good luck just with applying a little bit of water and friction tends to smooth out a lot of those scuffs and scratches. And we were talking a bit about break. That's where the toe flexes on the body of the boot here. On the Shell Cordovan, that's the big difference, is you don't get that sort of pebbling delamination that you see in other leathers. The Shell Cordovan is very unique, and it never creases. You might see it roll a little bit here, that's what people call this, but you're never seeing that sort of separation and pebbly sort of pipey look like you see on most other leathers. And that's sort of the big selling point for Shell Cordovan, is that it tends to keep this look forever. And that's why people buy a lot of shoes out of this. So the reason that I picked these boots originally was we sell a lot of natural Shell Cordovan wallets. In fact, that's our most popular Shell Cordovan color. And I've always really enjoyed the color of the natural Shell. In fact, I have a little, little piece here to show you. On something like a wallet, people really enjoy this natural Shell Cordovan because of how dark it patinas to. It becomes more golden brown, darker, and it develops layers of luster. I don't think you see that as dramatically on a piece of footwear because it doesn't have the action in your pocket to sort of polish itself all day. I do notice that this is a little bit darker than it, where it started. So again, here's a brand new piece of natural shell. It's pretty similar still. I think more towards the toe, it's become a little bit more dark, but on the shaft of the boot here, it, it's remained basically unchanged, maybe a little bit more liveliness to it. And that might be because I polished these with a little bit of water uh, once upon a time. So let's talk about the fit here because to me, that was the biggest thing that I was surprised by. And this pair of boots here was incredibly uncomfortable for a few months. And in fact, they write that in the box. In the box here, they include this piece of paper that says all of our boots and shoes are built with a heavyweight leather insole and heel counter. These natural materials will mold to the shape of your foot resulting in a custom fit and increasing comfort over time. Please allow up to 30 days of wear for this initial break-in period. The guidance that Viberg provides directly on that card seems appropriate and makes sense to me. It was probably a little bit longer than 30 days for me, although if, if I'm recalling correctly, I had to take a few days off just because they were really pinching me and really hurting. So these Vibergs have a really thick, chunky midsole here, and it doesn't really want to flex at all. And in addition to the day-night outsole here on the bottom, that reduces the flexibility also. And then the third thing is it has a liner. This is a pretty soft liner. So I don't think that liner's adding to the firmness of the boot, but it really needs a lot of time to break in. I didn't love that at all. And what's interesting about these is it's sort of the opposite experience that I had with the Grant Stone. So out of the box, Grant Stone, super comfortable as they wore in maybe became a little bit too roomy inside of the toe for me. These Vibergs are the absolute opposite. Incredibly uncomfortable to start. 
so uncomfortable. Definitely need a bit of break in, but as I've worn these, they're totally right. They've become more form fitted to my foot just from me wearing them. And after wearing these for quite a while, they've become one of my most comfortable pairs. Here's a look at the left boot. Again, I've had these for about two years, although I haven't worn them in a little bit of time. I need to get these back on perhaps after the uh, the Patina Thunderdome contest. But I was really enjoying these boots while I was wearing them. I think the big thing I'd like to do for all of these boots is to give them a nice little polish. And I have three different leather care products that we sell. So I think I'll do a follow-up subsequent video for these. I'll polish the Vibergs with some of the Saphir Cordovan Cream. That Saphir Cordovan Cream is the product that we choose to finish every Shell Cordovan wallet that we send out. I think on the Oak Streets, I'd like to try some Tanner's Blend. That's a conditioner that we do. It should give me a little bit more of a subtle effect, a little bit more of a cleaning and nourishing of the leather. And I think on the Grant Stones, what I'll do is I'll do some Venetian shoe cream because that's what Grant Stone uses themselves. So stay tuned for another video, uh, hopefully in the next couple of weeks of polishing up each of these boots. I've been really enjoying all three of these boots and they all have a little bit something different about them. So let me know what you think. If you have a pair of any of these, uh, if you're experiencing the same thing as me, or if you have any questions, definitely let me know. And until next time, I hope you have a good one.